Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. Well, it seems like black men have made their point. They have made their point. I think that's great. Black men have made a statement about who they are. And I believe the Democrats have gotten the message. I don't know if it's too late or not. But it seems like now they realize that if they want to get the number of votes from black people that they need, they are going to have to engage black men. So Kamala is coming for the black men's votes. And we'll see if she succeeds or not. Now, if you know you don't like Kamala, you know you're not going to vote for her, you probably need to sit this video out. Because I'm willing to hear what she's got to say. There are a lot of black people that are willing to hear what she's got to say and make their decision based on that. I know I'm not voting for Donald Trump. And nobody else is going to get elected at this point. So you're either going to vote for Trump or Kamala. So that's just the bottom line. So there are people who want to hear what she has to say. There are black men who want to hear what she has to say. There are black men who want her to come to them and appeal to them for their vote. And they have that right. But if you're not that person, then just sit this video out, please. So according to the Associated Press, black men emerge as key constituency in 2024 race, bringing dynamic views to the top of politics. Well, very good for black men. Atlanta, Georgia. Every Monday evening, the Andrew and Walter Young Family YMCA basement becomes a sanctuary for men who, local leaders say, have too often been denied one. Okay? The Black Lab regularly gathers more than 100 men to pray, meditate, and talk through challenges and triumphs they are facing and learn from peers and elders. So this is a place where men in Atlanta meet every Monday evening. It's almost a communion, said Cultural Coleman, a visual artist from South Fulton, Georgia, who has attended the weekly meetings for seven years. It's an opportunity for us to share our voices and get resources. The networking is always a good thing. It's a fellowship of sorts. Yeah, it is. One recent meeting in the immediate aftermath of President Joe Biden's suspension of his re-election campaign took on special weight as attendees considered the prospect of a black woman winning the presidency. The candidacy of Vice President Kamala Harris has refocused attention on black men, a demographic that Democrats and Republicans view as persuadable, but whose multifaceted experiences and political preferences often go unaddressed in public debate. Harris's campaign has also reignited discussions amongst black men about their influence in this election. Black men are the target and we hold the keys to the kingdom. This is our moment, said Lance Robertson, executive director of the Black City Councilman of Georgia during the meeting. The black man has built America. Now it's time for the black man to save America. Well, I totally agree with that. Black male voters are traditionally one of the most consistently Democratic-leaning demographics in the nation. This year, however, both major parties view black men, especially those under the age of 40, as attainable voters. Whether black men turn out in high numbers and to what degree they maintain traditional support for Democratic candidates may prove decisive in November. Yeah. I, I believe it will, because the Democrats need a certain percentage of black voters to vote for them. They need 90 plus. 
And black voters include black men. So they need these black male voters. So Vice President Kamala Harris knows that she needs the black male vote. So she has been actively engaging with black men to address their concerns and increase their political participation. Recently, she has focused on listening sessions and outreach events to understand the unique challenges faced by black men. For example, she has met with black male entrepreneurs to discuss the difficulties they encounter in scaling their businesses. Additionally, she has participated in events like the No Cap Conference, which aims to educate and galvanize young black men who are typically disengaged from the electoral process. This outreach aims to build authentic relationships and address systemic issues such as economic opportunities, police reform, and voting rights. Vice President Harris is taking these efforts seriously, especially during this election season. Now, if this is true, then she is on the right track because you need to be talking to, and I say you, she needs to be talking to black men who are serious about doing something about their economic opportunities. Yes, we are concerned about police reform and voting rights and also this mass incarceration, which my hope is that something will be done about this mass incarceration uh, school to prison pipeline. That's what I want to be addressed because it's unfairly targeting black men. So that's what I would like to see. So anyway, We'll see whether or not black men respond and whether or not what she's doing is enough. I'm going to stay tuned and I will keep you posted. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Have a good evening and leave a comment.